yesterday and pray for all the people that asked for prayer. Some have prayed for family. Some have unspoken requests. Some have mentioned friends and neighbors. And so, Lord, we're praying for all of them. We're also praying for these that are straight from the COVID, especially this friend, this colleague of mine, pastor in California. We're praying for him that he can overcome this by the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we're asking prayer all over Pacific Northwest and also California and other places for him and his family. Lord, also we're praying for the needs of the people here. And we're praying for us. One of the sisters shared to me her father is having a problem with gout, and we're praying for him today. Lord, that you remember him in prayer and help him as he works through this condition in his life. Lord, also we're praying for other needs in the church today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Love the Lord, how about you, amen? How about singing with me? I once was lost in sin, till Jesus took me in. Yes, yeah. 
Second shot two days ago, and I'm still living. Can you say that right now? Still, still kicking the old bucket around. What do you say? So, uh, a lot of people uh, didn't think I had faith when I took the first one, and I kind of let people know. I said, The Bible says if you take anything that's deadly, then the Lord would protect you. How many remember Amen. that? Yep. Amen. So, I figured, well, if the shot is going to be 
uh, harmful to me, God's going to protect me anyway when he said about that. And sure enough, I've been in restaurants, like I said before, everyone else say got sick but us. The reason we do that is because we pray over our food. How many believe that? Pray over your food. I don't care where you go. Pray over your food. God will sanctify you. Two things he'll do for you. He'll make sure that food is healthy. And guess what? You will not get fat on it. How does that How believe that? No calories. You guys don't believe that, do you? Well, I do. <laughs> so Brother Pruitt really shows on you, doesn't he? <laughs> Someone said McDonald's is scary. Larry's cooking more scary. I think some of his burnt bacon. Actually, I thought he was baking it for Sunday for sacrifice. What he said. Oh, Smoke sacrifice. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's yeah, sure. it gets all bacteria out of One thing about it, that pork wasn't moving no more. <laughs>
Matthew 24, would you stand for the reading of the word? This is all the words of Jesus. Uh, not everybody needs to stand, but those who are able to, uh, if you would. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. Likewise, ye, when ye shall see these, all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. You may be seated if you would like. Jesus gives here a mention of the parable of the fig tree. The fig tree is a picture of Israel. In 1948, three specific things were fulfilled in the establishment of Israel. Israel became a nation. The World Council of Churches came into being. And the common marker was begun. Three things in the year 1948. And what did Jesus say? He said, If you see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. And this is one reason why I've been focusing in on the Lord's return. I want us all, I want us all to be ready when he comes forth from that eastern sky. I want us all to be watching that eastern sky. I want us all to be watching our kids to make sure they're, they're, they're ready. I want us all to be watching our spouse to make sure they're ready. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's promised us that he's coming. Jesus has never broken a promise. And I would ask for the ushers if they would come forward this morning to receive this morning's tithes and offerings. God is very good. God is very good. Well, I mentioned that we have almost half of what we asked for for the band that the band does for the Hey, that's good. It's only been a couple, three weeks. That's good. And I believe that God's going to supply the rest of that money in the very near future. So let us pray over the offering this morning. Lord, we want to thank you and praise you for all that you do. You're so faithful, Lord. And you come through time and time and time again. Lord, we're thankful that this church has been protected from this virus that's hit all around us, Lord. And yet, we have been spared, and we give you praise for that. It's your hand of protection, Lord. And we uh, just want to thank you for your faithfulness again. Lord, as we come to you this morning, paying our tithes, giving our offerings, would you receive them, Lord? And would you add blessing upon blessing to those that give and the gift of life? For we ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Lyman. Appreciate your help. We didn't mention it yet, but uh, we believe that's going to come into Pam's family. We believe that it's, the Lord is going to respond soon and quickly for her. And uh, we're just praising God for that. Amen? Uh, people all over the website, Facebook, things like that, they're all helping us out. And we're praising God for that. I'm not singing with you, amen. If you know the song, you're more welcome to sing it, praise the Lord. I'd wandered so aimless.
Praise the Lord, how about you guys? And I'm glad being God's house, how about you? Did you want to do a harmonica special? It's up to you. I'll let you do that. Appreciate the children's church workers helping. Amen. Don't they do a good job? Amen. I think I got some announcements to make here real quick, and I'll see if I can find my bulletin. Seem like we got a whole bunch of things going on. Mother's Day is coming up next Sunday. Is that right? Yep. So Mother's Day is coming up, and uh, dads, you need to check down. Moms and those wives are really good. I mean, I went out and bought sister for some new furniture, so she's, uh, I figured I better do something for her for Mother's Day. What do you say? And uh, brother's coming up from California here pretty soon, and we're going to go see my mom there and uh, see how she's doing. And so we're just praising God for that opportunity. He feels like both of us should go. It really would shock her. And I said it would, especially if you came through the door. I've been over house several times lately in the last year, a uh, few years too. But he hasn't been there in 20 years. And I said, she's just going to be, her heart's going to melt when she sees it. And so he's going to be coming up in California. His name is Steve. Uh, he'll be staying with me probably for about a week. You guys can probably get to meet him. He'll come to church. Now, he's a lot thinner than I am. You guys are going to look at him and say, that's your brother? And, yeah. <laughs> He's a lot skinnier than I am. Don't ask me why. Him and my one brother, Dean, they can eat anything and never gain weight. Anybody anybody have a relative like that? Oh, yeah. Uh, got hollow legs. And uh, so Steve's one of those guys, he could just eat, never gain weight. He's always looked the same. Uh, for all these years, uh, I and he's just a... Nice guy. Never been married. Isn't that something? Uh, he's a little bit younger than I am. Probably about a year and a half. I think he's 64, 63, or 64. Actually, I think he's going to turn 64 this month. I, I'm forgetting. The, I think his birthday is May the 27th, but don't hold me to that. I, can't. <laughs> I don't have a memory like I used to have when it comes to birthdays and things. So I guess we could celebrate his birthday since he's coming up here. Like I say, uh, this week Sue has a birthday. How about that, Sue? Happy birthday to you. Thank you. All right. Natalie has a birthday coming up. And also, a Grady Siren has a birthday. And Jaden has a birthday. Jaden, oh, there he is. Glad to have him in church. Jaden. Jade and Justice. They call him JJ, I bet. Do they yeah. call you JJ yet? Uh, that's the other Jaden. Yeah. You're, you're talking about oh, Jaden. Oh, not the right Jaden. Oh, Jaden. Which Jaden is? Are these two of them? Dina's daughter. Dina's daughter. I'm ah. sorry. The only Jaden I know is this one. I know that Jaden, too. Okay, I got it. <laughs> yeah, you do. Well, okay. I told hello. you my memory's going last. So. Hey, Pastor, Hello. <laughs> Also, uh, 
uh, Jerry Fields, now I know Jerry, <laughs> and a Marchie Thompson, and a Serena Guerrero, and Nick and Cheryl have a... No, no, that's been changed. Uh, oh, you're my state there. Well, we better mark that out. <laughs> Jeff Gregerson, how about that? Yeah. And Ed and Sue Phillips has an anniversary. Larry has a birthday. So, uh, anyway, uh, let's sing happy birthday to Sue. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless me. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Give her a call. Amen. Let's pray for her birthday today. Lord, yes. we pray for Sue that you just bless her. Yes. We're just so glad to have a part of our congregation. Yes, Lord. She's one of the first ones that started with me here, and I've been here now almost 18 years. And uh, and she was probably coming here a lot longer than I was, and I'm just so thankful for that. She's what we call a long-time member. And we just want you to bless her and help her, encourage her. And Lord, she's been praying for her husband, and we've been praying for him too. And, and we're praying for her family, Lord. We're praying that you have your hand upon her. And we thank you for everything you've done for Sue. We appreciate her so very much, her contributions to the Lord, being a Sunday school teacher, all types of things she does. And Lord, we appreciate her so much and love her in Jesus' name. Give her that five. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And uh, May the sixth again. We will be having seven May the ninth. Is that right? Is that next? Next okay. Sunday. I got May the sixth all messed up in my mind. For some reason, I think it's Mother's Day. May the ninth. All right, Mother's Day. Do something special. All right. Uh, I like to say uh, Bible study will be. 6.30 Wednesday night, we're in the book of Revelation. Come, you'll enjoy it, all right? Also, our prayer meetings, 1 o'clock. Now, I won't be here for the prayer meeting, so I want you guys to know that. I'll be at the doctor's office. Uh, they want to check out my heart again. Not for sure why. You guys pray that everything's okay, okay? And we'll go from there. Let me get on down here a little bit for you. And uh, just praise the Lord. Knee is getting better, amen, getting stronger. I was able to help Sister Brooke carry a, a table into the living room. That's a good sign, can you say amen? Even though I had to roll it away, how many know it's one of the round ones I had to roll it? But it got in there, can you say amen? But we're just thankful that knee is getting better. Keep praying for my knee that God will heal it. I could really use a healing in my knee, amen. Would you lift your hand this way and pray for me today? Father God, I thank you again that I can come before you. And as I come before your throne of mercy and grace, I pray that your will would be done and established here today. I pray that you anoint me and help me today as I give this gospel of Jesus Christ to whosoever. And Lord, let whosoever shall hear, that they hear this gospel of the Lord. Let my lips be thy lips. Let my thoughts be thy thoughts. Let my heart be your heart. My hands be thy hands, and my ears be thy ears, O oh God, that I completely submit myself to thy Holy Spirit and to the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thee praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen. The Lord dealt with me to share something different to you today. The joy of the Lord is our strength, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. And the reason for that, because God wants you to know that we're to be happy with what's going on in our life. Even though we're wearing masks, we don't really like it. How many know what I'm talking about? Amen. But we can deal with it, right? Why? Because God has given us power and authority and grace over these things. And I just want to praise the Lord for that. As we continue today, God's joy is our strength. Can we imagine what our lives would be without joy? I was dull, empty, no doubt uncertain. Remember, God's joy brings us strength and hope, and our strength comes from loving and serving God. We must love God with all of our hearts, with all of our soul, 
with all of our mind and with all of our strength. He said over here, John chapter 15, verse 11, I have spoken these things to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be made full. Jesus spoke these things to his disciples, to his converts, that his joy would be in them. God wants you to be established with his joy. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to not only be happy, but to be thankful for the things he has done for you. If you haven't come down with COVID, you should be giving God glory. Can you say amen? amen. If you haven't come down with the flu, you need to give God glory. If you haven't come down with the cold this year, it's because God is protecting you. Do you understand what I'm saying? God is protecting you. God has had his hand upon you. Sometimes we take it for granted. But I want you to realize, let us not take anything for granted. Let us give God glory and honor. And glory. Amen. He said again, I've spoken these things to you that my joy, Christ said, my joy will be in you. And this is what he said, that it may remain in you and that your joy may become full. Your joy will become full. He said, my joy is in you that your joy may become full. The joy of the Lord is what? Our strength. The joy of the Lord is what? Our power. Can you say amen? Our authority. Our happiness, our completion. God wants us to be happy and joyful and content. Can you say amen to that? Amen. As we continue, God's joy keeps us from being cursed. Deuteronomy 28, verse 45. Moreover, these curses shall come upon you and pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed. Because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God. To keep his commandments, his statutes, which he commanded you. And they shall be upon you for a sign and a wonder. And on your descendants forever. Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of the heart. You didn't serve God with joy and gladness. That's why he said these curses will come upon you. For the abundance of everything he said I've given you. God has given us everything, and he expects us to be happy about it. Can you say that? Amen. He expects us to be happy about what he's given us and what he's done for us. So let me tell you something. You can knock on wood right now. If you're not sick, you're praising God. Amen. Amen. I know a lot of people are sick in the hospitals right now. And guess what? They may not come out of that hospital alive. They may not come back into what we call the land of the living. But let me tell you something, my friends. We need to be thankful that God has kept us separated and kept us healed and kept us healthy. And we need to give him praise and honor and glory. Amen, amen. This is why the Lord spoke this. He said, moreover, these curses will come upon you if you're not thankful. If you're not happy what I'm doing in your life. Moreover, he said, these things will come against you as a hindrance if you're not faithful to me. This is what the Lord was speaking to the children of Israel about. God's joy keeps us from being cursed. What else? When we offer sacrifices of joy, God will lift us up. Psalm 27, verse 6, and now my head shall be lifted above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy. Sacrifices of happiness. I will offer these sacrifices in the tabernacle of the Lord. I will come to church and offer my testimony and share to the people of God that I am content. I am happy. I am joyful that I am a Christian. I am a born again believer in Jesus Christ. Someone praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but if you come through any type of sickness or illness, you've got to be thankful. Amen. It's important that you become thankful. If you don't get sick, 
It's important to be thankful. Can you say amen? It's important to give God glory. He said, therefore I will offer sacrifices of joy in his church. I will sing, yes, I will sing the praises of the Lord. I will sing his praises. Can you say amen? amen. I will shout the glory of God as it falls upon us. I will praise the Lord and give him worship and, and gladness in my heart. He said over here in Psalm 94, when I am filled with cares and your comfort brings me joy. Psalm 94 verse 19, when I am filled with cares, when I am filled with anxiety, your comfort brings me joy. That's what he's saying there. When I'm filled with anxiety and everything is overwhelming, your comfort will bring me joy. Can you say amen now? What is the meaning of joy? Let's look at it. A feeling of great pleasure and happiness. A pleasure of happiness. A pleasure of joyfulness. A pleasure of being satisfied. You know what? I see more Christians are the most unhappiest people. And they serve the most blessed and loving and kind God. That's sad. When you look around and Christians aren't content and happy. Yeah. I'm not saying that about you guys, but I've been around people call themselves Christians and just not no joy in them at all. Yeah. Then replace the bitterness. And all of a sudden backslidenness overtakes their lives. And they got nothing to be joyful or happy about anymore. And then they blame the whole world. They blame everybody. Start with the pastor and blame the church, the whole nine yards. How many have seen that? Let me tell you, I ain't going to let no pastor keep me out of the house of God. I ain't going to let no member of the church keep me out of the house of God. I ain't going to let anything separate me from the love of Jesus Christ. Say amen or oh me. I ain't going to let anything separate me from this love. Quit looking at man yeah. and start looking at the God man. Yeah. Can you say amen? Yeah. Man will fail you. Yes. Man will fail you, but the God man will not fail you. There is a difference. Yes. Can you say amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. The feeling of great pleasure, <laughs> happiness, what else is it? It means tears of joy. What does that mean as we look at it? It means to have great delight or to have great pleasure in God. They're tears of joy. When's the last time you had tears of joy towards God? And you just cried and wept and cried and wept and cried and wept and cried and wept. And and wept. If you haven't done that, you haven't experienced something that you need to experience. Because those tears of joy draw you closer to God and draw you into his presence. And as you come into his presence, he begins to wrap his arms around you. The Bible says he covers you with feathers that are like an eagle's feathers. He covers you. Can you imagine being covered by the presence of God because of those tears of joy? Tears of joy. We get to the point, I don't know about you, Christian, but we get to the point that we're tearless. There's no tears in our prayers. Someone say amen or amen. amen. We pray, but it's not prayer. We petition God, but it's not petitioning God. Someone say amen. 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 You and I need to come back with tears of joy, tears of prayer, tears that will touch heaven, tears that will grab a hold of God and grab his attention and bring it to you.
Psalm 30, verse 5, for his anger is but for a moment, but his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Joy comes after that big. What does it take someone to die to get you to cry? We should be offering tears of joy and of sacrifice unto God. We should be weeping over the harvest. Say amen or amen. amen. Weeping over it. Weeping. Weeping before God. Praying before his altar. Asking him, what do you want me to do, God? What do you want me to do? Here I am. Send me. There is joy playing musical instruments before God. And then I will go to the altar of God. Psalm 43 and 4. To God my exciting or exceeding joy. And on the harp I will praise you, O God, my love. My God, my God. I would almost said my love. Can you say amen? That's what God is, my love. Those who listen to instruction will prosper. Those who trust the Lord will be joyful. Proverbs 16. Verse 20, there's joy playing music before God. Some of you say, well, I can't play music. You can sing that hymn. There's two guys in jail one night who were beaten up really bad. They didn't have a guitar. They didn't have a tambourine. They didn't have a harp. They're thrown in the deepest part of the jail. They got beat up, whipped. They could have turned around and said, this isn't right. This isn't fair. I'm preaching God's word. Now I'm in jail. I'm in jail and I got beat up. I got whipped. They didn't sit there and complain about it. They didn't sit there and belly ain't about it. The Bible says they started singing hymns. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the rich like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now. I see. Amen. 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 And as they begin to sing that hymn. Bible says that God heard their singing, their music. And the Bible says the jail began to rock. Earthquake took place and all the doors of the prison flung open and all the lights went out and the jailer woke up and he thought everybody escaped. So he took his own sword and he was ready to fall upon it. And the apostle Paul cried out, Don't harm yourself. We're here. He put down his sword and reached down and grabbed the lamp and lit it and came shaking and trembling to the cell where they were. As he came, he started shaking. Confucianly, 
trembling. And he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What must I do? How do I do it? How do I become like you? And he said, If thou shalt call upon the Lord and believe with thy heart, thy and thou house will be saved. And the Bible says him and his whole family become Christians that day. Because two men still had their joy in a bad situation. Still two people had their joy in a bad situation. Tears of joy, my friend. Your sorrow will become or will turn it to the joy. John 16, verse 20. Your sorrow will be turned into the joy. Into the joy of what? into the joy of the Lord. As we continue here, lastly, God can create joy and peace within our lives. Psalm 51, verse 8, Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. Blot out all of my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Make me hear joy and gladness again, O oh God. That the bones you have broken, sometimes God has to break them bones in us. Let us feel the pain until we start feeling the joy again. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for joy in my life. How about you? I'm ready for the joy of the Lord. It's my strength. I'm ready to come back Christian and give it all to God. Can you say, man, I'm in, I'm in like that. God's been stirring me up. Amen. God's been stirring me up. God's stirring me up. He wants to see this place back on fire again. Can you say, amen? I'm going to go pray with me this week that God's going to set our church on fire again. Amen. He, he can do it literally, but I don't want to burn down. Can you say? He can do it. I know. He's done this before. There's been times people said it, it looked like a fire on the church. And it's not. It's just the Holy Spirit coming down all over the place. And how many ready for the for the Holy Spirit to come down and just saturate you? And all you do is just sit there and cry and worship God. Cry. Cry and worship God. It's coming, children. It's coming. It's coming. Amen. It's coming. I believe that. How about you? Amen. Would you bow your head with me? Oh, Lord, right now, thank you for allowing us to come together. Thank you for having your hand up on us. Thank you for giving us the joy of the Lord because it's our strength. Without your joy, we, we just don't have nothing worth living for. Uh, the only thing we... The Apostle Paul said it. He said, to, to die is gain. He said, to live is for Christ. To live is Christ and to die is to gain. And this is what he said. Lord, we love you. We worship you and glorify you and praise you. And thank you for all the, the blessings you bestowed on us. We praise you even more and glorify you. And we're happy, Lord, with what you've been doing in our lives. Thank you again, oh God, for being here with us today. Oh Lord, right now, touch each and every heart as the Spirit will deal with them in the name of the Lord. Maybe you've heard me today and that your joy hasn't been where it's supposed to be. Maybe you said, Pastor, I, I, need, I need God's joy in my life. 
Is there a person like that today? Raise your hand. I see that hand. Here's another one. There's another one. There's another one. Is there anyone else? There's another one. I, the joy hasn't been there, Pastor. The joy hasn't been there. Keep your hands raised. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. If your joy has left you, I'm going to pray God will bring it back. Oh, God, bring back the joy. Bring it back, God. That they'll be happy again. They'll be content, oh God. They'll be at peace, Lord. Help them to have peace again in their lives, oh God. Help them, Lord God. Help them. Help them, God. Help them in Jesus' name right now. So, Lord, I know the joy of the Lord is my strength. Everyone say it with me. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I need God's strength in my life. I need God's joy in my life. Give me joy, Holy Spirit. Give me joy that I may rejoice. Give me joy that I will be take pleasure in the things I can do for God and to help others, oh God. Hallelujah. Give me joy. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, I enjoy preaching the gospel. I love it. I take great satisfaction in doing it. I love to play the music of the Lord. I take great satisfaction. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't play it. I'd be playing some bar somewhere. But I don't have no joy in a bar. I don't have no joy like that. The joy I have is playing for God. Doing it for God. That's where my joy is. My joy is in the Lord. Amen. I enjoy going to church. How about you? I enjoy it. It's me. It's part of me. I've been woven into its fabric, this joy. Amen, amen. I know I'm still preaching that joy, I feel fine. But I just want you to know. Amen. I take joy. I tell you what, I don't know about you, but a while back, two or three years ago, three years ago, we bought a house. I, I love that place out there. My wife says, well, you can't work it no more. I don't care if I can work it or not. I still love it. Can you say that? Amen. And she's not meaning anything negative by it, but because of the injury of my leg. But I still enjoy watching the flowers grow. Mm -hmm. Have all these rhododendron bushes been growing. And and praise the Lord. I love it. How about you? Thank you. But you know what I love more? Is seeing people come to Christ. Mm -hmm. I love that more than anything. I love seeing people give their hearts to Jesus Christ. I love it. I take great joy in seeing people turn their life over to God, like many of you have. I take great joy. <laughs> this sister here, several years ago, gave her heart to God. I remember. Amen. And the one behind her, amen. Praise God. And uh, I, I watched them all, all those in the back there. Almost every one of them are saved in the last several years. Can you praise God for that? Amen. I tell you, praise God. Amen. I might have one that's long term back there. The rest <laughs> of them, man, they're all new in the Lord, you might say. And uh, take great joy and satisfaction. And seeing people come to Jesus Christ. That should be everyone's desire here today. It's to see your loved ones come to God. And become tears of joy. Tears of joy. Maybe if we begin the process of bringing the tears back. God will bring the families in. Can you say amen? amen. Am I right? Maybe God will bring the families back. That have lost their way. Amen, amen. I don't think I had any more slides, did I? Oh, do I got one more? Where's it at? Who gets me through the hard time? God does. And God cares about us. And it's his desire for us to be, what, happy. Right? It's God's desire for us to be happy. We should go around like an old stick in the mud. <laughs> Hate it today. I don't like it. I wish I was bored. Whoa, me. Whoa. Remind me of those guys on here. How many remember that song they always sing? 
the only luck I have is bad luck. If it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have no luck at all. <laughs> no. God does. God cares about us. It's his desire for us to be happy. Happy people are healthy people. And without joy, it's impossible to be happy and content. Hebrews 13, verse 5. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Happy people are healthy people. Happy people don't get sick. They stay. They stay healed. Well, you know how hard it was to get this message to that little girl in that little chair back there. It's the hardest battle I ever had is to help her understand what joy is. I said, when you restore your joy back to God, God will completely heal you of everything that's happened to you. And that's what's happened. Can you say amen? God has healed her completely. She's been invited by another church to come and share her testimony here in the Jew. Don't you all not show up here, you'd be in trouble. <laughs> <clears throat> so she asked me, said, Dad, what should I do about it? I said, I think you should go preach and give them a sermon yeah. and you should share your testimony what God has done for you. Yeah. Yeah. I said, because God has done great and mighty, powerful yes. things for yes. you and for me. I said, he has healed you miraculously, 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 miraculously. But it all started because of all that joy was gone and depleted. And it took a year for God to reassure her that she wasn't going to die, but that he was going to restore her and heal her. You know, that's hard to puff up someone's faith. When it's got nothing but holes on it. Big holes. But you got to patch up the faith before you can pump it up. Can you say amen? Now I'm giving you more preaching. I'm sorry. But you got to put patches of hope on it. Because without hope, faith will never endure or come to pass. So we've taken nothing but patches of hope, patches of endurance, patches of love. Can you say amen? amen. And patched up all that faith where we can pump it up in the name of the Lord. And guess what? It's worth it. Can you say amen? amen. amen. You know what? She never thought she would ever get another band. I'll be honest with you. Never thought. And yet, right now, it's starting to happen mm -hmm. and take place. You can see it because of God. <sighs> Somebody's coming by this week, and they're going to give her right. an offering. We'll put her completely over the top. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Right. Over the top. That's God. Jesus. And it's going to happen this week. And the line that says, I expect it to happen real soon. He, yeah. He's right. I had that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Sister Fruit had that knowledge. Pam has that knowledge, but you didn't have it. And guess what? It put her completely over the top. Right. Isn't that amazing?
Because of what? Joy. Yes. Restoring your joy will allow God to do the impossible in your life. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, nothing is impossible. All things is possible to him. But if our faith has nothing but holes in it, <laughs> you can pump all the hope you want to into it. And it will do nothing but flatten out like a flat tire. Hello. That's why I'm always sharing to you. Don't give up. Hold on. God is faithful. God will help you. When you feel like giving up, God is there. When your body felt like giving up, God was there. He says, no, let's get up. Let's go. It's not time yet. There'll come a day if God wants to kill you, He'll kill you. <laughs> Guess what? There's nothing you'll do about it. You'll die just like that. Amen, Earl. Amen. If he wants you to live, you're going to live. Hello. Mm -hmm. So Jesus said this. I'm closing up for you. Here I am. There, playing to my hand. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Jesus said this. Why worry? Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6. You can't do a thing about it, he said. Why worry about these things? You see, the birds of the air don't worry. They still build their nest. He said, even a sparrow falls from the tree. God cares. But he cares more about you than he does the bird. Why worry about it? Let it go. When you were carless here a while back, when you finally said, okay, God wants me to walk the rest of my life, I'm going to walk. <laughs> but guess what? He brought you through a hard time. He gave you another car. He gave you your old car back, too. Do you, uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Be joyful in whatever is happening in your life. Amen? Mm -hmm. Be content whatever God brings to you. And take it like a, a man. Yes. Or take it like a wall. Can you say that? You know what God told me? Joe, stand up. I will speak to you. And you take it like a man. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, where were you when I created the heavens and the earth? Yeah, Joe was doing the same thing you're doing. Nothing. <laughs> he said, now listen. Where were you? When the morning stars start singing. <laughs> I've never heard of that until I read the book of Job. <laughs> Where were you? Where were you at when God created the other day? Some people say, boy, Pastor Craig, you got such great faith. It's because I know God. I see him when he's done over and over and over. <clears throat> you can have that type of faith. It's called mouth moving faith. Amen. Amen. Stand.
Father God, thank you for allowing us to come together. Thank you for letting us be here today. As we pray, we felt God challenge the people here to trust God even more and greater. We ask you now to take us to our separate places. Bring us back to the appointed time, O oh God. Lord God, you're just not God. You're the Lord God, the only God, the beginning and the ending God, the great Alpha Omega God, the great I Am. Hallelujah. Go with us. Be with us. Protect us and shield us from all harm. Keep us safe from the COVID virus and other viruses that are out there today. In Jesus' wonderful name. And all the saints say amen. 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 God bless you guys. <laughs>